to release 3.10 and uh, we had hoped to be able to release it before the conference but there were some hiccups so it will be released in the upcoming hopefully days uh, but it might be a week or two uh, we introduced support for LTI 1.3 um, and uh, we already supported LTI 1.1 in the past in, in, in uh, that started in uh, 3.8, which is now already two years old. Uh, but the biggest issue we, we, we had is that um, how we implemented that is that each learning object, uh, so perhaps uh, a, a, a short introduction uh, to Xerti for all of you that do not know what Xerti is. Xerti is um, a content uh, authoring tool, especially uh, geared for um, multimedia rich uh, e-learning materials um, <clears throat> and uh, so with Xerti uh, you can make e-learning modules and the way we implemented LTI 1.1 is that each module uh, became its own LTI tool um, which works quite well if you have all the rights in, in, in an LMS and in an admin uh, but normally as a teacher, uh, you do not have all the rights. Uh, so you would have to ask your ICT or your IT department to um, enable each and every learning object that you wanted to use in the LMS. So we changed that. Um, have we now have a, 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 also because of LTI 1.3, that is a bit logical to do it that way. Uh, so we can now have a, a global LTI key setup once by an admin and then uh, teachers uh, can use all the uh, learning objects and, and, and give access to all the learning objects that they want to. So as a teacher you still need to um, uh, enable uh, a learning object so you can prevent uh, your learning object from being used uh, as an LTI tool even though the global key is set up. Uh, but once you're satisfied that the learning object is finished, you can uh, give that access and um, uh, <coughs> and use the tool in, in any LMS that supports LTI. Um, we have a standard Xerti dashboard. The standard Xerti dashboard was in, uh, incorporated uh, in the Xerti environment itself. Uh, and what we wanted to do, uh, which is very cumbersome if you want to uh, give access to the student to the dashboard because then all of a sudden the student needed to have login rights to the Xerti system and that was not the intended purpose. So new in Xerti 3.10 is also to be able to, to use the Xerti dashboard as an LTI tool uh, which is what I will show as well and I will show you uh, future plans. So why use LTI? So once it's set up, it's a quick way to embed Xerti LO into an LMS uh, in such a way that it's also very maintainable. So if you have a typo or you want to change some uh, uh, phrasing of a question because it turns out to be ambiguous, uh, you can go into the Xerti environment, um, fix, fix the error, fix the, the or, or improve the text, and it's uh, immediately deployed. And it's also used as a very efficiently, uh, you can also use it very efficiently as an access control mechanism, um, which is also uh, very fortunate because uh, uh, previously uh, we had the possibility to use an HTTP referrer. Uh, so you could uh, um, indicate that only specific referrers could access a learning module. Uh, but it turns out that more and more uh, LMSs amongst uh, Blackboard amongst them uh, do not send the HTTP referrer anymore so that whole mechanism doesn't work anymore um, but uh, now you can replace that with LTI without the need to uh, place the learning object uh, publicly on the internet um, what we do and why we use LTI specifically uh, in combination with dashboards is that um, as a student, you do not log in in the Xerti system. The Xerti system is really an authoring system. Uh, you can set up a single sign-on, uh, so, so you could enable students to log in, uh, but that's not, not the main purpose of Xerti. 
so uh, if a learner starts um, a learning object, you want to know which learner that is. Uh, because we want to be able to track XAPI events uh, if the if your institution has an LRS, uh, we want to enable XAPI, and we want to know who is using uh, the, the the learning object to be able to identify the learner for the XAPI tracking. That's one reason. The other reason is when we deploy or when we uh, um, uh, show the dashboard, and the dashboard is related to a group. Uh, we want to know which students are part of that group. So we can filter all the LRS XAPI uh, events to that specific group. Uh, so we will only show data of that specific group and not other data, not uh, data of other groups, other people that have nothing to do with that group. So it's a kind of a uh, uh, a neat uh, authentication mechanism uh, and we use the LTI 1.3 advantage names and roles provisioning service for that. And last but not least, uh, uh, we can use LTI to write back the results to the great book of the LMS if the LMS is set up uh, to support that. Uh, in the future, uh, we want to take advantage of the uh, new possibilities of LTI 1.3, but that's for next release uh, to have much a much better integration with the gradebook. So it's very rud rudimentary at the moment, uh, but it does work. <clears throat> so how uh, do we set up uh, uh, LTI and and um, uh, and the LMS in Zerti. Now, what we do basically, and I can show you uh, how we do that, is we we can, so this this is for example my um, Zerti environment. So I'm logged in as a user, and uh, I'll switch to the English language, and have my workspace and have my folders, and these are the learning objects that are uh, are available that I created or I have access to. Um, and if you look at this URL, so this is my installation. And within this installation, uh, we install Tsugi. Uh, and just by appending Tsugi to the name, like this, so this is the same URL with Tsugi appended. Uh, I will show you what will happen. Uh, I will, uh, uh, it will enter in the Tsugi, normal Tsugi uh, uh, panel uh, where I can administer my tools. So if I go to the admin panel of this installation, uh, I can go to the, uh, this, this, this is all very well uh, documented. Uh, at least uh, uh, I had no trouble to set up uh, LTI 1.3 issuers uh, in, in, and in itself, it's not a really uh, straightforward process because um, uh, you have to set up OAuth2 uh, keys. Uh, so there is some back and forth with URLs, and, and I will show you the process uh, later on. And in the presentation, I have uh, several screenshots, uh, and the presentation is available. Uh, the link to the presentations is mentioned in Trisakai, uh, so you can refer to that later on. So this is basically the, the, the uh, admin panel of Tsugi itself, uh, created by Dr. Chuck. I'm very grateful that he did that. Uh, it saved me <laughs> a, a lot of time. Uh, and I connected it now to our Moodle. Uh, one of the things that we want to do uh, right after the release is uh, set up a Sakai and see if there are any glitches uh, within Sakai. But I think this will work uh, very nicely in Sakai as well. So going back to the presentation, so here I have uh, uh, the, the the whole the whole process how that works. Uh, so you, you uh, start by adding an issue entry on the Tsugi side, and it will show you some URLs that you will need. Uh, you can copy them. Uh, then you go over uh, to the LMS, and I've taken uh, Moodle as an example. And you, you you fill in those entries that you got from your Tsugi panel uh, here, 
and fill in all the details that you want. And this is different for each LMS. Uh, so you will need to uh, look up how, how to do that for your specific LMS, but the procedure should be very similar. And once you've done that, uh, uh, you, you get a, a tool and uh, there, there will be a possibility to uh, find the configuration details. And in Moodle is by pressing this button. And you will get the platform ID, the client ID, the deployment ID, and the public and some some public URLs. Well, you copy those URLs or write them down or print them or email them uh, in Moodle, and you go back to the Tsugi panel. And in the Tsugi panel, you fill in those details below here. And after you've done that, uh, you can you need to create a tenant key. And the tenant key uh, only had this is the 1.3, the LTI 1.3 issue that you just set up. It's a drop down list, so it's very easy to pick out. And you need to fill in the deployment ID and the deployment ID you got from, from your LMS. Once, so this is how you set up Xerti, uh, LTI, and, and Moodle. You only need to do this once, this whole procedure. Uh, if an admin has done that, then as a content writer, and I can show you in my uh, environment. So, it, 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 as a content writer, I can go to the properties fence, uh, the properties window, and the properties window there's an LTI X API tab, and you can fill in some details here. Uh, uh, so you can make the tool available. Uh, you can use the globally configured keys, including LTI 1.3, and basically that's all there is to it. If you have an LRS, uh, you can enable XAPI as well, and there's a way to globally set up the LRS so you don't have to uh, set up the key in secret for, for, for each uh, learning object uh, individually. And there, there are uh, screenshots in this presentation as well. So this this is, um, I pointed out which uh, things you need to switch on uh, and there's some explanatory text here. Once you've done that, uh, that, uh, uh, that specific tool will be available in Moodle. So I show you this in Moodle. Uh, as a, a teacher, you want to use that external tool. Uh, in Moodle, you can uh, either use the external tool and then select uh, the one you uh, uh, had, Xerti, or you can even add Xerti as an extra button uh, as if it were, were an internal tool. Once you've done that, uh, the, the thing that you need to remember if you do that is you need that template ID. Uh, so the, the the launch URL uh, will be uh, the tool URL will be uh, will be available in that properties window. I'll show you again. If I go to that properties window, go to the LTI panel, and if I set this up and update it, this is the launch URL. So you copy that, and that's what you fill in on the Moodle side. <clears throat> Uh, so here, this, this you will need to copy it in here, and basically the whole thing is up and running. You can run your dirty object. Uh, now, if you do not want to uh, add uh, the, the, the learning object, but you want to add uh, the uh, dashboard, uh, there is a mechanism uh, in uh, LTI, uh, which is switched on. Uh, you, can, you can select the content, and we set up the, the, the whole Xerti install in such a way that if you press that button, it will show you one tool, and that one tool is the dashboard. So it will not show all the learning objects because then this list would be far and far, far too long. Uh, so you cannot use this uh, uh, this mechanism from select content to uh, uh, 
uh, insert uh, the learning objects itself. Uh, uh, you need to copy the launch URL, uh, which is uh, uh, because otherwise this this whole dialog would be unmanageable. But the dashboard is available as a tool. You can install it, uh, and then the, uh, the, uh, the whole mechanism is equivalent uh, to uh, introducing a tool. And then the dashboard needs to know for which learning object you want to have the dashboard. So you need to. Uh, insert a custom parameter. Once you've done that, the dashboard is available in your LMS. Yeah, like this. That will be present. This is Moodle, and this is an embedded dashboard. But what we did uh, to the the dashboard is. Um, uh, th th this is already uh, available for some time, uh, uh, but specifically if uh, a learner uh, had several sessions of the same learning object, it was very, very, very difficult to understand what the meaning of these colors was, was and what session was uh, 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 meant. Uh, and so what we did is the ability to fold out uh, such a line and it will show you all the individual session that a, a student did. So you can really, really, really zoom in on all the results that the student filled in. Yeah, that's really neat, if I say, say so myself. And the future plans. <clears throat> What we are working on is to have um, a course register. Uh, one of the biggest drawback of using XAPI and an LRS is that XAPI only shows you what the student has done. Uh, so it doesn't show you what the student hasn't started or hasn't done yet. Uh, so it's really difficult uh, if you have a uh, if you want to create a dashboard um, that aggregates a whole course with several modules uh, and you want to also have, say that you have a course with four modules and you want to uh, be able to show that the student has started two modules but hasn't started the other modules then the dashboard needs to know that there are four modules so those what we are working on is a course register um, uh, and uh, uh, for each course it will uh, have an indication on how many modules are available uh, and uh, on, you can zoom in on the module level and it will have this, this course uh, online learning has four modules uh, and the dashboard can pick that up and knows that it should present uh, four modules and if it can only find uh, data in the, in the LRS for two modules it knows that two of them haven't started yet. Uh, so we're also working on the aggregated uh, dashboard that uses this technology. Um, so this is the, the course level uh, and it will uh, pick up the students that uh, are in this group uh, using the names and um, roles, provisioning services from LTI and it will use the course register to figure out how many modules it should have. Um, and present uh, whether uh, a student has uh, is in progress or not started yet or finished and failed uh, uh, and can uh, so this is the view on, on module level uh, so this is each module and it gives an indication on how the student population has has done this module so this is on the on the module level um, and there is another view. This is on, on the, this is a, a particular student. A particular student. Uh, this is the interaction with the course, and these is the, uh, are the interactions with the specific module. Now, the course register uh, will be a very important source of information to the dashboard. And um, uh, what we can do and what we have created is that uh, the, uh, the course register will be able uh, to harvest uh, all the modules from a Xerti installation and use the metadata in all the learning objects uh, to build such a course register. Uh, and then we, in, in, uh, we will also uh, uh, allow people to add modules here 
uh, that are not sp specifically 30, uh, for example, H5P modules. Uh, so that we will be able to uh, show the results of H5P modules in the future as well. Uh, and if Sakai is able to track XAPI data, uh, we want to be able to uh, uh, show those results as well. This is all in progress. Um, it will, uh, part of this will be available uh, open source and we hope to be able to release this later this year in the um, end of the third quarter, beginnings of the fourth quarter. So this is uh, my in contact information. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, you can, uh, this is how you can reach me. Are there any questions? Tom, thanks for that presentation. That was, that was great. Um, there are two questions in the shared notes. Uh, one was from me, which is when do you expect to release the dashboard and course register that you've already answered 2021 okay. quarter three or quarter four. Yeah. Um, there's a second question uh, from Tiffany Stull of the University of Virginia. And she asks, are there text alternatives for the colored boxes in the dashboard? And how can a keyboard user access them? This is a, an accessibility question or set of questions. Uh, no, we're thinking about that. Um, the, so at the moment, there are there, there are no um, so th there aren't accessibility issues with the dashboard, uh, not with Zerti itself. Huh? We try to uh, make the learning objects uh, as accessible as possible. Uh, uh, but the dashboard, indeed, we need to find the solutions for those colored boxes. Um, I don't think we will uh, completely make. Uh, re, um, succeed in that effort in the first release, but we will definitely uh, try to improve it in subsequent releases. That's a very good question. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Tom? You can feel free to either unmute yourself or post your questions in the shared notes. Tiffany's asking a follow-up question while others think about their question. Could the boxes just be changed to text, she asks. Not yet, uh, but that, that, this is one of them, uh, because we know what the meaning is, so, so uh, there should be a, a mechanism to do that, uh, but that mechanism needs to be implemented. And we are definitely planning that, but it's not done yet. All right, thanks. What other questions do folks have for Tom? It's 9.26 a.m. Eastern. We have about four more minutes. So there's time for a few more questions if you have them. All right, last call for questions. All right, then, if there are no further questions, uh, thanks again to Tom for this great presentation. This is this is pretty fascinating stuff. And thanks to all of you for being here. So next up is uh, it, another session of lightning talks at 935 Eastern in just a few minutes. So uh, hopefully we'll see you all there. So thanks. Thanks very much. And see you all soon. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you.